Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 The Call to Separation Because the subject of separation is either neglected or overstressed, a note in the matter is of importance. A brief summary analysis of key New Testament passages is thus in order. First, Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 clearly calls for a separation from Babylon, from the dream of a one-world order without God. This is clearly a call to political separation. It requires the believer to divorce himself from liberalism and from socialism, and ultimately, it clearly requires a Christian political order. This means a Christian party as a means to a Christian state. Since the dream of non-Christian politics is to create a working and finally perfect social order without God, and since the Christian must hold that such an order is futile and judgment-bound, Christian separation and action are necessary. Second, in 2 John verses 10 to 11, ecclesiastical separation is required. A true church cannot receive false teachers or ministers without becoming a partaker to their evil deeds. Since church services were in the New Testament era and later held in homes, the prohibition against receiving apostate religious leaders meant either as speakers or leaders, or as guests, since hospitality was then provided by believers. This did not prohibit true ministers of Christ from speaking in synagogues, as Acts clearly evidences. It did prohibit receiving false teaching. Ecclesiastical separation has as its necessary implication the severance of religious association with heretics. St. Paul declared, Mark them which cause divisions and offences contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Romans chapter 16 verse 17. Paul also wrote to Titus, A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition rejects. Titus chapter 3 verse 10. Even more bluntly, Paul declared, Let him be accursed who brings another gospel. Galatians chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. Jesus Christ himself spoke even more forcefully concerning false religious leaders, calling the Pharisees children of hell, Matthew chapter 23 verse 5, hypocrites, Matthew chapter 23 verse 13, 15, 23, 25, 27, 29. Fools and blind, full of extortion and excess, serpents, generation of vipers, blind guides, children of them which killeth the prophets. Matthew chapter 23 verse 19, verses 24 and 25, verses 31 and 33, and much more. His attitude was not that of cooperative evangelism or promiscuous love. The entire significance of the church is nullified if the church becomes itself an area of compromise and coexistence with unbelief, heresy and hypocrisy. The church is called to be a holy, that is, a separated congregation, a people set apart in terms of faith. Without separation, the church is not a church. Third, the Old Testament forbid mixed marriages. The church now faced a different situation from that facing covenant people. In Israel, the believer could not marry an unbeliever. But now congregations included men and women who were converted after their marriage and their partners remained unconverted. The question raised, then, was simply this. Should such marriages be rendered null and void or should the believer involved be subject to excommunication as were the Jews who engaged in mixed marriages in Nehemiah's day? Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23 following. St. Paul's answer was that, the cases being different, such marriages should be maintained. But if the unbelieving partner departed or broke up the marriage, then the believer was free. The marriage was then null and void. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 following. Fourth, the great general statement on separation is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Verses 14 to 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together. The Greek word translated as yoked is heterozygio, to be yoked with one of another kind, to come under a different or unequal yoke, 
to have fellowship with one who is not an equal. Several things are clearly apparent in this passage, which is general in reference, so that, first, it applies to marriage, business, education, worship, and all things. Unequal yoking in any area is thus contrary to God's general purpose for his people, and the yoking of believer with unbeliever in any capacity is unequal yoking. The question is this, is the relationship a yoke? Second, it must be a yoke, a voluntary submission or union which involves a contradiction of faith. Third, unequal yoking prevents separation or holiness and is therefore forbidden. Fourth, unequal yoking involves the equality of belief and unbelief. It assumes that there is no difference between the believer and the unbeliever, and this we are not permitted to do. Fifth, the yoking is comparable to marriage. It is a close and binding union. A fifth passage is important also in relationship to separation. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 9 to 10, which forbade the congenial or religious association with sinners, but also made clear that general business and polite associations were not meant. For then must ye needs go out of the world. No yoking or submission is involved in such associations. Beyond the plain letter of Scripture, there is Christian liberty, so that variations of practice are possible. But none can make private concepts of separation the law of God. The call to separation is real and specific. To overextend its meaning is as clearly wrong as to deny its meaning 